From global current affairs to art, science and culture, the documentary from the BBC World Service tells the world's stories. Search for The Documentary wherever you get your BBC podcasts. Hello and welcome to the Witness History podcast from the BBC World Service with me, Rena Stanton Sharma. I'm going to tell you a story about a tiny dog who was a war hero, TV star, and was believed to be the world's first therapy dog. It all started in 1944 when she had a profound impact on wounded soldiers. Smokey being there kind of turned things around a little bit because she'd been a dog in the war with them and she was novel in her size and what she was doing, they'd hear her story and they'd watch her perform. And so it, it really had a whole different effect than your average therapy dog would because these are wounded, they're coming off of combat. Here's this little dog that's going through the war with them. That's Bill Wynn, Smokey's owner. He's speaking in a 2005 University of Tennessee film. Bill was a corporal in the US Army Air Corps. He was a photographer in the 26th Photo Reconnaissance Squadron in Papua New Guinea. That's where he adopted the Yorkshire Terrier, who weighed less than two kilograms and stood at just over 15 centimetres tall. Bill bought Smokey after another soldier found the scruffy-looking pooch in an abandoned foxhole. Bill instantly fell in love with her and began teaching Smokey tricks to entertain his army mates. His strong bond with dogs developed early. Growing up without a father, Bill would move around a lot while his mum was looking for jobs. Bill's good friend, Adrian Brigham, explains. As they were traveling around looking for work, Bill and his brothers spent quite a bit of time in orphanages. And they just never really had a lot of time to develop strong relationships. He'd always seemed to have a dog around and always loved dogs so much that it was just kind of natural. Adrian, a fellow Yorkie lover, came to know Bill decades later. He wrote to Bill after seeing him talking about Smokey on TV. To understand how Bill and Smokey's strong bond developed, I need to take you right back to the start of their relationship. The pair went on 12 missions together. Smokey had her own spot in the plane they flew in. Bill had made her a special seat and they even survived a typhoon. She was becoming well known and she made it into the US Army's weekly magazine, Yank. Bill and Smokey became even closer when Bill caught dengue fever and was hospitalized. His friends brought Smokey to see him as Bill remembered in a 2011 film from the Pets charity, PDSA. And the nurses see this dog, she hear the story, said, could we ask our CO if we could take Smokey on rounds with us? We got a bunch of wounded fellows coming in from the Biak Island invasion. They love her because she's one of them. The nurses also brought a patient in a wheelchair to watch Smokey perform her tricks. Smokey started to do a few things. He started to gurgle, this man did. One of the nurses right away said, Mr. Wynn, just stop a minute, give him the dog. So he pulled her up in the air and he was gurgling and making all of these sounds and everything. He was just so thrilled. I looked and all the nurses were crying. And uh, I wondered what the heck's wrong, you know. And uh, he hadn't talked for two years. He had hardly moved. And yet when he got a hold of the dog, that was his response. That was Bill speaking to the University of Tennessee. It was a big moment, as Bill told the PDSA. And Smokey is credited with being the first therapy dog on record. As well as comforting wounded soldiers, Smokey played a crucial role when she crawled through a narrow pipe under an airfield, taking a phone line with her. It saved soldiers days of dangerous work, which would have left them exposed to enemy attacks. We didn't have telephone poles. We couldn't have wires hanging over there. So the logical thing was to go through this one of these culverts that they had that the Corps of Engineers had put in to drain the field. 
come Smokey, come on, baby, come on, come. You know, I kept calling her, and uh, she's still coming. He goes, yeah, I'm still feeding line. She came all the way through the pipe. You couldn't get a dog in a thousand to go through a dark tunnel like that they had never seen before. But she did it. She trusted me. That was Bill talking to WCPN in 2011. Smokey was paraded around camp, high above the soldiers' heads, and instead of her usual spam rations, she was rewarded with a juicy steak. As word spread of her talents, her tricks were becoming more and more elaborate. According to Bill, he even taught her to walk a tightrope, blindfolded. They built a scooter for her, and she would pedal her own scooter around camp, and she would roll on a bear like a uh, circus animal. And Bill said the most difficult trick that he taught her, and she was very stubborn about learning it, but she did learn it, was how to spell her own name using cardboard letters. In all, she learned over 200 separate tricks that she could perform. With tales like that, it's no wonder Bill would turn her into a TV star. But I'll get to that soon. When the war ended, the army wouldn't allow animals on ships, taking troops back to the States. Bill was devastated, but he smuggled Smokey on board in a crate. It wasn't a very good hiding place. The two officers in charge of the army on board the ship uh, threatened him. He had to sign papers saying that he would put up thousands of dollars in uh, fees to bring Smokey safely back to uh, the States. And he agreed to do it even though he didn't have that kind of money. When it came to disembarking, nobody was around to ensure Bill paid the hefty charges and he just walked off with his beloved Smokey. After returning home, Bill, his wife Marsha and Smokey travelled to Hollywood where Bill got a job training animals. Not long afterwards, in the early 1950s, the war hero dog, with all those amazing stories, started a new career as a TV star in the children's programme Castles in the Sky. He was offered a part on a show on a regular basis in Cleveland, and he would dress up in a clown suit, and they would come on with Smokey and have her do different tricks. And he said that one thing he was very proud of is that she once did a string of over 40 shows in a row without ever repeating a single trick. So she was destined for fame. Yes, she was. <laughs> and he said that that's how she lived out the rest of her life, was just entertaining people. He said the last two years of her life, she slowed down quite a bit. That was when she was 13 and 14. And it was when Smokey was 14 that she died in 1957. She was buried in a park close to Bill and Marsha's home in Cleveland, under a tree where the couple had carved their initials years earlier. In 2007, on Veterans Day, a life-size statue of Smokey was erected in the city. The story is, uh, is so unusual, this little tiny creature doing so much. However, the size didn't mean anything because the, the ability of the dog to withstand all of the rigors of it was amazing. Her story has become legendary. She was a legend in her own time. That was Bill Wynn speaking to the University of Tennessee. He wrote a book all about Smokey called Yorkie Doodle Dandy in 1996. Bill died on the 18th of April 2021 at the age of 99. Adrian Brigham was speaking to me, Rena Stanton Sharma, for the Witness History podcast from the BBC World Service. <laughs>